Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We've got some good news for June. Uh, I'm really, really happy about this. And I bet you Legendary will be as well. So Legendary are actually the company that made June, along with Godzilla vs. Kong. They have 75% stake in it, and Warner Brothers contributed 25%, as well as distribution rights. Now, all of that got flung into oblivion when Warner's decided to put everything over on HBO Max. Legendary started to essentially begin legal proceedings because they were withheld money from another deal that Warner's blocked. And um, now, well, AT&T is selling, well, have sold, merged Warner Brothers, Warner Media with Discovery. June looks to be going to theatres. Epic news. This is an article on Deadline. You'll find it linked down below. Please do read along with me. Also linked down below is my second channel where I'm actually rebuilding a Group A rally car. It's a homologation special called the Nissan Pulsar GTIR. Very rare little car uh, between 10 to 14,000 made worldwide and I've got one of 23 currently in the UK and I'm rebuilding it. So check the link in the description box if that sounds appealing to you. I'd love to have some of my community over there as well on my second channel. You know, that being said, let's dive into this. So, Hollywood Cheers, AT&T Retreat. Viewing Discovery as more talent-friendly Warner's steward. HBO Max day and date strategy for June gets a rewrite. So, this gives us a little bit more of an overview of the deal. And then goes into the nitty-gritty with respect to June. Uh, so, we'll cover it all because I think this is interesting. I did a live stream on the deal yesterday uh, going into it all. It's massive. I, I just words can't comprehend or do it justice how big this deal is. It's huge. It's gonna it's gonna change the way studios act moving forwards. I think. So as the news sank in about AT and T winding down its Hollywood foray via a 43 billion merger with Warner Media and Discovery, one word summed up the film industry's prevailing reaction: relief. Uh, they've actually sort of well, essentially made a loss on this 43 billion. Is nowhere near the 85 billion they paid for Warner Media. Now, not only does the deal end the three-year shadow cast by AT&T, numerous sources told Deadline, but it averts another scenario: a tie-up with NBC Universal, with more dire implications. The climate at AT&T run Warner Media is already showing signs of shifting, even before the deal closed which is expected in mid-2022. Deadline hears that June, the high-profile Denis Villeneuve sci-fi remake out this fall, will not adhere to the day-and-date release pattern established for the entire 2021 slate. Instead, it will be premiering in Venice in September, and then it will go to theatres for a time before heading to HBO Max. I like it. I like it. It's not quite the theatre exclusive I was hoping for. Or at the very least, you know, not quite the extended run in theatres I was hoping for. Still pretty good, though. Now, addressing the deviation in the release plan, Warner Brothers Distribution Chief Jeff Goldstein said there was no change to the October 1st date for June. The film, like the rest of the slate, will open in theatres the same day it arrives on HBO Max, he said. So, we don't quite know what's going on yet going to premiere in Venice, September, then go to theatres, then go to HBO Max. But Jeff Goldstein is saying, no, 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 that's not happening. October 1st, October 1st. So we don't know quite what the, first, you know, the left hand is saying and the right hand is doing. But I would hazard a guess Legendary could be using this as leverage. I would imagine so, anyway. Now, few mergers are perfect, and the time between now and the completion of the Discovery Warner Media transaction promises to be a stretch, with yet more uncertainty and executive comings and goings. But numerous people in the film world Deadline spoke with felt a newfound sense of optimism about life under David Zaslav. The longtime Discovery boss, who will run the combined entity, is perceived as more industry savvy and talent friendly than the current regime at the top of Warner Media and Warner Brothers. Now, for more than three years, three of the most storied brands in entertainment, nearly century-old Warner Brothers, HBO and Turner, both cable pioneers born in the 70s, laboured under adverse conditions soon after the close of AT&T's 
billion acquisition of Time Warner in 2018, workers faced tumultuous rounds of staff cuts as silos were broken down between long autonomous divisions. Uh, that tends to be the norm anyway, in fairness. And obviously there was lots of restructuring sought to impose order at the same time. A clock was loudly ticking down to the launch of streaming service HBO Max. While some degree of, of streamlining is inevitable in any merger, Dallas-based AT&T never displayed much of a feel for Hollywood. And that culture clash reached its peak at the end of 2020 when WarnerMedia CEO Jason Killar, who had been handpicked by AT&T CEO John Stankey, led what was referred to internally as Project Popcorn. That initiative put the entire 2021 Warner Brothers slate, uh, Wonder Woman 1984, basically, uh, and, and everything else, should I say, that was the first one, uh, on HBO Max at the same time it hit theatres. Big mistake. Now, Kill Art is reportedly uh, negotiating his exit. Literally, th as soon as this was na as announced, Kill Art was like, yeah, I'm going, basically. Uh, having only learned about the merger plan on Saturday, sources say, the timing was awkward and another way Killar was the subject of a rigorously reported but largely favourable Wall Street Journal portrait that went online Friday. Headline, the HBO Max boss's script for a new Hollywood. Such strange timing with all of this, it really is. Now Warner Brothers had already reached a deal with Regal Cinemas to restore exclusive theatrical windows in 2022 before titles go to streaming, given the regal deal and other indications of the industry shifting back toward more theatrical exclusivity, the idea of Dune following a different path is not a shock, but it is plenty symbolic. Killar's insistence on ramming through the day and date approach earned him no shortage of resentment, even though dozens of profit participants have been paid out in settlements, assuming success. I mean, they had to pay so much money out, it was crazy. Now, Killar's scheme did, to be fair, prove successful for releases like Godzilla vs. Kong. Yeah, but Legendary would be annoyed at that because they would have made more money if it just went to theatres. And yeah, they took lots of money. But again, Warner Brothers didn't pay for it all. That's the point. Now, um, there's some like topic of other movies here that, oh, yeah, could be good, could be bad. But Zaslav, by comparison... Though he has specialised in deal-making sales, sports and unscripted TV, but never film, has a more innate feel for the town's dynamics in terms of him being, uh, you know, the sort of brand new messiah for Warner Media uh, and Discovery anyway. So, look, it's interesting. This is interesting. The rest of it that it goes into, not that important, to be fair. It's not that interesting. We don't know um, how this is going to go moving forwards, but it just explains the sort of breadth of the deal and the impact of the deal anyway but this uh, is telling I think if this does shift the way they're saying it's going to could Dune just end up as a theatrical exclusive I think so I really do think so and I think Legendary could use this to their advantage as well so please do let me know what you think down below in the comment section Dune it could be going to just theatrical release or at least just theatrical then HBO Max not HBO Max and Theatrical at the same time. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. Please do check that you are still subscribed and please do check that your like doesn't disappear because that's what YouTube has been doing recently. Thanks so much, the guys. Take care.